recently released CentOS 6. Now CentOS, as most of you know, is the open source uh, community distribution, if you will, built on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6. Now this distribution has been long awaited in many, many circles. This distribution is very stable. It boasts itself in rock solid stability. It is meant for the enterprise, so you know that this thing is not gonna fail on you. And that is really the whole driving purpose behind this distribution. Basically, if you want Red Hat Linux, uh, with all of its wide, wide support that it offers uh, on the net, uh, but you don't wanna have to pay for that Red Hat license, then CentOS 6 is the way to go. This distribution will rock out on whatever hardware you give it, but it is rock solid stable software. And although it is a bit old, especially in the Linux world, it is for good reason. And it is a never fail, never say die distribution. Now, many, uh, many enterprises still use CentOS 5, uh, but with CentOS 6, we do have quite an update to all the software packages uh, that come into Red Hat Linux Enterprise 6. Now, of course, Red Hat is then built off what was developed in the Fedora distribution uh, quite a number of releases ago. So I think we were looking at Fedora 11, and now we're up to Fedora 15. So that's a bit of an indication. So we're looking at software that is well, one almost two years old as far as development is concerned. So that means as far as GNOME is concerned, we are running 2.28.2. And, uh, and you can see here that I am running the live DVD release, which is about 1.6 gig download, and it includes both GNOME and KDE. So we're gonna have a look at both of those desktop environments today. So essentially, uh, this, this live DVD includes a lot of software. The full install DVD does include even more software. But basically, the idea here is that we're gonna be sticking to basic tools and our very famous, very stable software to get the, whatever job done that you might have. So you'll have to forgive the fact that there's a lot of KDE stuff in here because both KDE and GNOME is included in these menus. Uh, and thus we have a lot of K applications in here as well. But as far as the GNOME ones are concerned, you basically get stock standard GNOME. Um, really, you can't get much more vanilla than what you have here in CentOS 6. Um, so as far as accessories are concerned, we just have all of the usual stuff except for Tomboy Notes, which they swap out for GNote. Now, GNote is essentially the same thing, and uh, except it isn't written in mono, as, uh, as the Fedora community doesn't seem to like mono that much at all. Uh, and so uh, accessories are just going to be standard GNOME there. There's nothing to write home about. Games, uh, there's nothing there as far as GNOME is concerned. We have a few, uh, we have quite a few KDE games, but mostly uh, there are no GNOME games there uh, or GNOME games. Uh, so now under, under graphics, we have quite a bit. We've got acquire images, uh, we've got acquire images for your scanning, as well as GIMP, a GThumb image viewer, and uh, Inkscape. And we also have a scanner tool here as well, and the rest is KDE stuff. Uh, under internet, we have Firefox and Thunderbird. That is your primary communications. Most, uh, most enterprise situations are gonna be familiar with both Firefox and Thunderbird as they are the respected uh, internet uh, applications. And then of course, we have Pigeon for your instant messaging and XChat IRC. So those are all very, very, very well-developed tools. They've been around for a long, long time, and they certainly uh, fit their place here in this distribution. Now, as far as version numbers are concerned, uh, Thunderbird is sitting at version 3.1. Uh, so of course, we uh, do have Thunderbird 5 available as well as Firefox 5, but Thunderbird is sitting at 3.1, and Firefox is sitting at version 3.6.9. So these are very uh, stable, uh, very stable versions of the Mozilla suite. Um, they've been in development for, uh, well, a very long time. They've been polished over the years. They have uh, great, they have great stability. So that's why they are here in this distribution. Uh, when it comes to Office, we have OpenOffice, but it is quite an old version, as you may imagine. Now, the good thing about CentOS is you aren't just limited to one particular uh, version of an application. If you want a more recent build of OpenOffice, as you can see here, we're at 3.2. Uh, we are now at 3.4, so this is quite old um, in that it hasn't been uh, really developed or, uh, or expanded since 2010. So uh, in the Linux world, that is quite old, but this is rock solid uh, OpenOffice. This is the same build that came into Ubuntu 10.04, the long-term support release. So this is the release that most corporations are gonna be using, most enterprise situations, because they know the software is stable. 
However, if you do want more recent, uh, more recent programs, more up-to-date programs, uh, a guy on the internet called Dodoimido, he is a fantastic writer, and if you haven't checked out his website, definitely go and check him out. Uh, I personally, I personally don't know him or anything. I'm not. Uh, I'm only plugging his website because I have found it a valuable resource on multiple. Uh, instances, but you can see here he's written an article on how to uh, how to get sent OS six to this to the state where we would want to use it as an everyday system uh, that we can really benefit from that stability, but at the same time not uh, not uh, sacrifice the um, the release versions of the software included. So he includes uh, details on Firefox five, the same of which will work for Thunderbird five. Uh, Google Chrome and uh, all your multimedia codecs, LibreOffice replacing OpenOffice, uh, Adobe Flash, Sun Java, and all that fun stuff, uh, VLC, and all of those fantastic applications uh, to get your system fully functional. So that is all very good stuff indeed. Uh, so definitely go and check out that article. I will include links in the description box below. But back to CentOS, uh, you can see here under Office, uh, under Office, we've just got Evolution Mail and Calendar also, as well as Thunderbird. So you can use that if you so wish. Apparently, it does have better Microsoft Exchange support than Thunderbird does. Uh, as far as sound and video is concerned, we have Audio CD Extractor, Prosero Disc Burner Cheese. Uh, we have the Movie Player and Rhythmbox. Most of these applications you would have recognized from earlier Fedora releases. Some of them have been swapped out and bumped around since, but as far as Fedora 11, which is what Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6 is built on, and, uh, and thus that is what CentOS 6 is built on, uh, this, this is all uh, very stable, recognized GNOME software. So basically you just get stock standard GNOME, and, uh, and that is really the, the draw card of this experience. Everything is very coherent. It's a very coherent user experience except for the file browser. Uh, now in my opinion the file browser is a little bit too spartan for my tastes. Uh, we don't have a side panel here at all. That can be seen as a good thing or a bad thing. Um, honestly it's it's minimalist, it's functional, but it would be nice to see some sort of navigation down the side. Uh, you can see we don't have any tabs or anything of that sort so it is a little bit sketchy as far as a file browser is concerned. However, it works and it is stable, um, but you probably would want to tweak it once you've installed it. Um, now, as far as package management is concerned, uh, now, as I've already mentioned, it is Red Hat, so you do just have the standard uh, ad remove software for your graphical user interface, and you have Yum on the back end. Now, as far as this package manager is concerned, um, this has been by far the best Fedora or Red Hat experience I've ever had. Uh, although the software is old and it does seem quite clunky uh, compare, compared to the, the more recent distributions, uh, compared to more modern ones like Fuduntu or uh, Fusion Linux, which are also built on Fedora, um, this, this, this distribution has just worked in, in almost all respects. Apart from the graphics card, which only gained in-kernel support uh, with more recent releases, um, this distribution works out of the box. Suspend and resume is very snappy. Uh, all the package management worked out of the box as far as just plugging in, uh, plugging in basic proxy details, not even having to edit any config files. It automatically figures out the mirrors for you. It automatically gets the right repos. You add uh, RPM Forge and you have all the software you could want or need for a basic desktop. Uh, so honestly, it worked very, very nicely. I was very impressed. Obviously, the package manager is a bit spartan, but that is GNOME for you, and that's the, that's the GNOME 2.x series. Um, that is really the purpose behind it. It's supposed to be simple, it's supposed to be uh, functional, it's, and it's got to work. And really that's what CentOS, um, at least the GNOME version, is all about. Uh, so Yum on the command line is very, very nice. Uh, it's actually worked 100% functionally for me this time, which is a first. Uh, so really, CentOS 6 is really Fedora without all the bugs and crashes that uh, that we commonly uh, that we commonly see, and uh, unfortunately, Fedora has become notorious for. Uh, so really, this this distribution, CentOS 6, is uh, is a real milestone in the in the Linux community, and many uh, many enterprises, many corporations are going to be using this distribution for years to come. Uh, CentOS 5 and CentOS 5.5 was all built off. Uh, all built off software that came out in 2005, 2004 even, so it's very old software but it's great to see we are now updated, we have some lovely fresh backgrounds in here, plenty to choose from in the enterprise scene, 
Uh, honestly, this is a fantastic distribution, and this is just the GNOME side. So why don't we jump over to the KDE and see what's happening on over there. Okay, so here we are with the KDE desktop. Now, again, KDE, this is not by any stretch of the imagination the latest KDE at all. Uh, it, looks very, uh, it looks very familiar to the OpenSUSE 11.2 release, and indeed we are running KDE 4.3.4. So it is, again, uh, almost a year old as far as the software compilation is concerned. So really, at the end of the day, we just have the standard KDE applications in this distribution. Uh, really, there, it doesn't stray much beyond the vanilla install. Um, so I'm not going to go through all the applications because most of you know what comes standard in a KDE distribution. But uh, in summary, it's KDE uh, 4.3.4. So it is, uh, yeah, I mean KDE 4 has come a long way since then, but having said that, it's very, very stable. It's very solid, just like the rest of this distribution. Uh, now, CentOS 6 as a whole is very well performing. It has very nice performance on, on almost every level. Really, application performance speed and launch speed has been fantastic in this distribution. It is a very well performing distro, both on the KDE and the GNOME fronts. So really, you can't go wrong with this distribution on the enterprise level. And as far as the everyday desktop user, I would recommend giving it a go, uh, especially the live DVD. It's a 1.6 gigabyte download, as I've mentioned. You get both KDE and GNOME. So I think I think it is worth giving it a try and just seeing if it's something that will work for you. Uh, if the if if the age of the software does not, uh, if the age of the desktop environment doesn't bother you that much, then you can get the latest software in things like Firefox, Thunderbird, Office, uh, Office, etc. So it is possible to use this distribution as a normal everyday system, and I reckon many people will simply because it is so rock solid stable and it's so and it performs so well, and everything about this distribution just works. And I think that's what this distribution is all about. It's been in development for about ten months. Uh, since Red Hat Linux 6 came out. So it's had a lot of time to mature and it's definitely a fully baked distribution. This one has not left anything to chance and I haven't come across any bugs or crashes at all. This is CentOS 6 and it's a worthy replacement to the venerable CentOS 5 that has graced the systems of so many enterprise situations over the last three years or so. Highly recommended and I give it definitely a solid five stars.